Hi everyone and welcome to my Monte Carlo Masters semi-finals vlog. Wow, what a day at the Monte Carlo Masters semi-finals and I'm going to walk you through all of it. I've got some amazing content for you guys in this vlog, including player practices, TFO heckling Rublev, selfies with players and some failures of selfies with players uh, and the matches and the crazy atmosphere in the stadium. But before we get into the video, if you enjoy the vlog and my content, please like and subscribe to help the tennis section community grow, as well as the fact I'm going to, you know, Madrid, Rome, US Open, Wimbledon this year, so there's going to be a lot more tournament vlogs coming to the channel, as well as the usual previews, predictions and tennis news, so please subscribe if you haven't already. First of all, we needed to get to Monte Carlo. Getting into the tournament, I had to ask my girlfriend what her predictions were. So what's your prediction for the day? Rublev in three and Sinner in two. Next up, we headed towards court two as we saw a little bit of commotion over there, a lot of people. And actually we saw Rublev who was practicing. But as soon as I got there and I sat down, Rublev was starting to practice his serves. And I was hearing some guy just scream footfall every time Rublev would serve. And I was like, who, who is this arsehole? And then I looked to my left and it's Francis Diopo outside of one of the windows screaming it. Now please enjoy some of the Rublev practices I did. One thing I did notice how relaxed Rublev was during the practice. He wasn't really going full out, but when he did, and he was hitting a shot as he would like to, the ball was going very low over the net. There wasn't too much cl net clearance. And on clay, that's actually probably a good thing sometimes if you're trying to attack, because it doesn't give your opponent too much time or height to get in the hitting zone, which might have helped him. Rublev was also extremely nice on and off the court. After he finished his practice, he went to say hi to all of the fans, autographs, selfies with everyone, including myself, albeit the one where he took with me, he looks a little bit tired. Thank you, good luck. Next up, I headed to the main pop-out area where they had loads of stores, and the first thing that caught my eye was the Babalat store, and I headed straight for the Pure Aero Rafa, the new one that just came out, and personally, I was just trying to get a feel for it, because I actually ordered it myself earlier this week, and I'm looking forward to it coming in the mail. The color wave actually is really cool, and it, the balance is a bit different than the usual one, than the, than the old one, so it's gonna be quite interesting to see how it works. I also had to make my way to the Nike store and as a Rafa fan, as you can see, it was tennis heaven for me just because they had so much gear of the new collection and I might have ended up buying myself this and the purple hat. The views here in Monte Carlo are beautiful and to be honest, I think it's the prettiest Masters 1000 out of all of them. You're right on the seaside, you've got the sun from one side, you've got the mountains on the other side and you know, the weather's, it can change but it's just a beautiful scene altogether. I then headed to watch Holger Rune practice on court two again, got myself a pretty good seat again, and he was definitely going all out and trying to, you know, get involved with the crowd and trying to sort of, you know, build up the atmosphere. It was also great to see how him and Patrick Moritoglu actually were, you know, talking to each other and how they were somewhat, you know, giving each other tips and sort of trying to understand and build on his game. You know, you didn't really see that in the Rublev practice. Rublev was more to himself and just focusing on his shot, whilst, you know, Rune was expecting a lot of coaching from Patrick throughout the entire time. Holger was definitely very keen to practice his drop shots during that practice session, albeit at the start of it, there were a fair few that went into the net or out. But once he warmed up, they started actually coming into fruition. Once Holger's practice was finished, he quickly ran off the court. He didn't really, he didn't say hi to anyone. He didn't give any autographs or selfies to anyone, including myself, you can see here. It was a bit of a failed attempt. No one got anything, not even the kids. But, you know, you can't really blame him. When you're going into the semi-finals of a Masters 1000 at 19 years old, you really just want to stay focused in your zone and just make sure that you're really prepared for the match and not get any distractions. Then it was time for the first singles match to start, Andrei Rublev against Taylor Fritz. Quickly into the match, we saw Stefan Tsitsipas actually sitting down towards the top end of the seats in the stadium. And I think the tournament organizers noticed this as well because they quickly upgraded his seats. The match was extremely tight and both players were hitting the lines continuously and playing some extremely long rallies. It was a great quality match.
The weather was also worsening throughout the match and we started to put our jackets on. We had seen a little bit of rain coming down, so we were wondering when the match was going to be suspended. And there you go, halfway through the third set, they did suspend the match and we had to go into a sort of a, a bit of a panic. Everyone was trying to leave the stadium. I waited a little bit to get a little bit more clearance and then we went underneath some cover for the rain delay. Once we headed back onto court, we were expecting the match to be extremely tight as it was before, but Rublev was on fire. He came out firing, he won. There was only five games that we watched once we came back on court and Rublev won four of them. and he was just incredible there and he got himself into his third Masters 1000 final. He was also very nice in his post-match interview with the interviewer and the crowd. Now it's time for the main event for the majority of spectators here in Monte Carlo, Hog Rune against Yannick Sinner. My goodness, the crowd was crazy and the atmosphere was incredible during that match. Obviously the majority of the crowd obviously Yannick Sinner and they were really going at him and giving him all the energy they could do. However, there were still a lot of Holger Rune fans and he did mention them and he did sort of point to them a lot during the match because they were really the ones driving him to get forward. I also think that the neutrals in the crowd coming in to watch this match eventually shifted to being supporters for Holger Rune just because there were so many supporters for Yannick Sinner during that match that they needed to balance things out. Eventually the match did get suspended and we had another rain delay on our hands. Thankfully, this time we stayed on court whilst the rain delay was happening. I had an umbrella and I had a Monte Carlo towel to keep me cover. When the players eventually did return to the court, the atmosphere was even crazier than it was before. I didn't even think that was possible. Maybe because there was a few drinks going on in between the break. You know, at the change of ends, he's always having a towel over his head, trying to sort of not really think too much about the crowd and the atmosphere. But to be honest, I think the crowd and the Italians really got to him in the end. They put a bit too much pressure on him, and I think that's what eventually cost him a few games in that match. But in the end, Holger Rune showed us why he's a world-class athlete at 19 years old and got himself into his second Masters 1000 final. The handshake at the net was a bit cold at the end of the match, but you can't blame them. You know, they're young guys, the atmosphere was crazy, and you know, there were a few things in the match that neither of them liked. Rune was definitely very nice in his post-match interview and he definitely pointed out to the fans that actually weren't support to him and he thanked them very much. In the end of the day, it was a great success and eventually, unfortunately, we had to head home. But it was a great day at the Monte Carlo Masters and I'm very excited to have done this vlog for you guys please let me know what you thought of it i'm definitely going to head back there next year because it's just an incredible atmosphere great views amazing sort of facilities and to be honest i think it's my favorite masters 1000 for now i mean i've still got to go to madrid and rome so my opinion might change but for now it's my favorite masters 1000 so i should i would definitely recommend it to you guys to go there if you enjoyed the video please like and subscribe and let me know in the comments below what your favorite part of the vlog was or what i can do better for next vlogs obviously this is my first ever vlog so i'm still learning and adapting but let me know in the comments below and help us grow the tennis section community we're really trying to grow and get some new members